people look at stories through different lenses. I have my own take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. Hello, hope you're doing well. I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to today's episode of In Case You Missed It on Sportsmax and Scene TV. Well, Guyana's squash team has always been known for their decades of dominance in the Caribbean Junior Championship. Guyana's 12-year reign as Caribbean Junior Champions ended in 2017. They regained the title in 2022, but Barbados reclaimed it and are the current junior champions. While the country, referred to as the land of many waters, is greatly appreciated for producing Nicolette Fernandes, the highest ranked squash player ever from CARICOM. Just last year, Guyana swept the team events to retain the senior Caribbean squash title. Well, today's show will focus on squash in Guyana. And joining me to help shed light on the past successes of Guyana's squash team and the upcoming events for this season is chairman of tournaments, DJ Dias. DJ also plays squash. In fact, he's been playing since around age six. Welcome to In Case You Missed It, DJ. How are you? Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for having me, Mariah. Fine today, thanks. All right. Well, we're going to start today's interview by reflecting and celebrating last year's achievement. Guyana secured gold in the senior men's, women's and veterans team events to retain their overall title. What an achievement. Well, we weren't expecting it to go into, to be honest. Um, we always know that uh, we always aim to be the best, but this is unprecedented success. Even by our standards of having 12 years in a row in juniors, we never really had a uh, similar success like this for seniors, but. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a welcome achievement. Yeah, you say welcome achievement, but it must mean a lot to you and of course Guyana, especially because it's a sweep and we're talking about a minor sport. So what did this mean for the Guyanese squash fraternity? Well, we have a very close-knit uh, driven fraternity and um, like, um, like with things um, happening in terms of uh, investment locally, we really wanted to, to step up and show that uh, that investment is in the right place. So we rallied together, um, worked really, really hard on our senior team, especially since we um, since we had lost the junior title. We really wanted to come strong because we've made some um, some local ties with our new uh, corporate sponsor, Enet. We yeah. wanted to, to show our value. So coming home with the triple gold was, was a nice way to start a relationship. Yeah, for sure. And when you say triple gold, it sounds very pretty and glittery. <laughs> but talk to me about the work, the hard work that goes into getting a team ready for a major squash competition. So I really um, put it towards, like how you said, we had 12 years winning in juniors. Yeah. But if you look at our senior team, it's those same juniors who have now trickled into the senior team that have brought that success to the new category that they've entered. So when you see uh, names like... Uh, Alex Arjun, Shisnari Khalil, Mary, Mary Fangafad, Ashley Khalil, Ashley De Groot. These are all names that you have seen in the junior program in that 12-year sweep. So um, when when now that these players have come into the senior category, along with support to like legendary status like Nicolette Fernandes, it creates a recipe for, for something similar to happen in today. So by all means, I think uh, it's probably like a 12 years in the making if you want to think back about how those efforts from all those years ago led to something like this happening today. Yeah, and it's something that Ghana would be extremely proud about, so much to celebrate. And you just mentioned her name. We can't talk about this sweep and we can't speak about squash without mentioning the Caribbean squash queen, Nicolette Fernandes, who took part in the veterans category. Talk to me about the importance of having a player of her caliber on your team. So Nicolette, even when Nicolette was on the tour, whenever she would come home to train in Guyana, she would also like like brush shoulders with us when we were juniors 
So having Nicholas a part of the Guyanese squash community is a big part of our success because, you know, you've seen somebody go to the other side and succeed, and then they're bringing that knowledge home. So by all means, it's one, it's two things need to happen. Nicolette giving us the effort in terms of spending her time and us like harnessing that that professionalism and trying to apply it to our to our goals and our achievements. And I believe we were able to do that. And trust that Nicholas had a lot of achievements and this this go round is gonna be hard to top because she herself is now a world champion, which we're so proud of. Yeah, let's talk about that. She was named world champion in Poland in 2022. That's another incredible record and something for all the squash, you know, enthusiasts to look forward to. Right. So, so master squash is doubling every single year, um, and it's giving all these uh, professionals another bite, another bite of glory, you know. And uh, I see Nicolette kept herself so fit over the years that she saw an opportunity for herself to to win big and big win she did and what was really great is that um the, the following year she then decided to play on the caribbean circuits and come and support us in cayman islands so you know um it was really appreciated that she would uh, she would come down and play for us yeah and i love that you said appreciative because when discussing the success of squash a lot of appreciation the name carl ince must be mm -hmm. mentioned Coach has been very instrumental in Guyana's success and so too the development of Nicolette Fernandes. So give us now some insight, DJ, into the work done by Coach and how much he really means to the Guyanese squash community. So Coach actually just uh, just had his 80th birthday the other day. Yeah. And Coach, Coach has been training me since I was six or seven years old. And just in that transition of us as juniors being successful, winning 12 titles in a row, all those 12 title wins was under the tutelage of Carlins. So it can't, it can't be, you know, underspoken in terms of his impact on Caribbean squash. And also um, to mention, he's he's a level four elite British coach, which is the, the highest level you can be in terms of um, British coaching. And he, he not only has an impact in Ghana, he also has an impact in the Caribbean. He certifies coaches. So we would have coaches from Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados, St. Vincent come down to Guyana to, to take part in his clinics. So, you know, he, he's a, a superpower yeah. in regional squash. Yeah, a legend in his own right. And you know the interview uh, you sent for me to listen to before yes. we did this actual interview on In Case You Missed It. I was really cued into the fact that he said when he started to coach Guyana's squash team, he didn't have all those qualifications. No but difference. he understood that in order to lead the team, in order to lend his assistance, and in order to get the best from the Guyanese squash players, he really had to up his game. And I think that is so big on him to understand that, you know, he didn't know it all. He had to also up his education. He did that, and we can understand why the Guyanese squash team has been so successful for such a long period of time. Now, you said he celebrated his 80th birthday uh, quite recently. So does this mean that he still lends his assistance when he can? Because I know in the same interview, he described himself as semi-retired. Correct. He, he, he officially retired, but you know, when, when you've dedicated your life to, to a sport, it's very hard to do so. And uh, we, we still want to benefit from coach as much as we can. So for instance, like once coach has the time and he's around, we'll definitely give him center stage in terms of leading the team and um, coaching us to the best of his ability. But uh, he does have his own squash facility that he built himself on the Linen Highway, which is about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes out of town. And um, our, our best would go up to his facility to train with him. So I like to think of it as like, um, those old uh, Kung Fu movies where you have the master in the mountains and if you're willing to come and train with him, he's willing to accept you. So his his impact is, he, he's basically um, giving the best he can, which is still immense for somebody who's quote unquote retired. Yeah. So, you know. Right, well, you know, top stuff from coach and of course, when you really love something, it doesn't matter, you know, how old you are or anything like that. It's, it's just that inner feeling to, of course, continue and to continue doing it because it brings you so much joy. I want now, DJ, to zone in a bit on the male side of squash. 
I know the Barbadian Kamal Cumberbatch has been dominating and Guyana has not won a male title in over a decade. How come? Um, well, I would say that that's a big part in terms of our local players going on the, um, the world circuits. That is, that is definitely uh, an objective that we're trying and we're discussing in terms of how we can encourage at least to have one, one or two um, professional players on the circuits at any given point in time. And with these investments that we're having in Guyana, some new courts and new facilities, we need to, to, to come good on that investment in terms of having players on the world circuit. Because as you didn't know, the, the champion before Kamal was Chris Binney, who was on the world circuit. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Stafford, who's won a Caribbean title, was on the world circuit as well. So what we need to do, we need to, we need to get males on the world circuit so they can get that international exposure so that they can start competing um, with other males from the Caribbean who've done the same. Because Kamal, he's in um, he's in university right now, but he has every intention of going on to the to the professional level, which we all are trying to encourage him. Because we, as a Caribbean community of squash, uh, we're still very tight knit, and Kamal's success is Guyana's success, is Jamaica's success, is Trinidad's success. So all of us, pretty much, even though we compete every year, uh, I would love to see all squash community from Guyana, some from the Caribbean, to succeed. Yeah, really um, heartwarming to hear that. And of course, you know, I'm really looking forward also to see the Guyana male squash players start winning again. So tell me a bit now about the junior squash program. Uh, with the introduction of the under 11 category, has there been an increase in the involvement of youngsters? So um, the under 11 category was an initiative that went in, in within like the last half decade. Whereas even though the Junior Caribbean Championships happen in from the age category of under 13 to under 19, we wanted to encourage the younger players to still come and get exposure to the Caribbean community. So we introduced the under 11 category. Um, they had an individual title, but it didn't come towards overall points. Since last CASA at, um, in Cayman, they have then ratified bringing under 11s into overall points. We're still learning about that format, but um, well, that means that there's going to be more pressure on, let's say, a 10-year-old um, towards the overall championship. And although that may sound a little bit uh, nervous for now, it's it's only about like, giving them the exposure that they will need to develop into well-rounded young adults. So it's the first time for it. So us us being one of the dominating countries looking at a format change it's a lot to look into we need to focus on our on the 11s because there was a huge turnout from countries like bermuda who who don't necessarily consistently place in in the top in the top two or three but because they have such strong on the 11s you will see countries from differing regions probably doing better because they they have that that's untapped talents that they can now use towards overall points is squash a school sport um, I would say that is something that we can work on better. Um, it's something that we are talking to the government about because um, they, they have invested a lot into squash facilities. We have probably the best squash facility in terms of public courts in the region right now with a huge investment from the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport headed by uh, Minister Charles Ramson Jr. But um, in terms of sports in directly involved in school curriculums, that is not necessarily a thing right now. Um, I believe we have a culture that is very similar to the Caribbean where, um, where academics come first and then sports trickle in afterwards. What I've noticed in, um, in other countries, they would have specific, uh, specific educational programs where, where athletes would, would, would be at work all day doing fitness work, doing sports work, and then they will do lessons at night. Whereas in Guyana and most of the Caribbean, it's opposite where we're in school eight to three, and then whatever extra time we have, we're dedicating to our sport. So it's something that I think uh, Guyana is developing into, especially with the heavy investment into sporting facilities, not just squash. We're seeing it in track and field, we're seeing it in cricket and football. So I believe that um, in terms of utilizing these facilities to the best of our ability, there will be an outreach into schools and working squash into into sports curriculums rather than just like physical education alone yeah but uh, it's it, it's going to take a lot of organization because you know you have to pull the kids out of school get them back in time for their parents to pick them up yeah um, 
So it's it's something that we're looking into and, and we're hoping to, to take advantage of. You just touched on, and I feel like we can't breeze past this because this no. is a big, big deal. Really exciting news for squash. Guyana is set to open a 65 million Guyanese dollar squash facility in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And this will enhance the country's ability to host international tournaments in the future. I feel like we need to spend some time talking about this and I'd love to know how excited are you for this development? It's a big, big deal. It's a dream realized. It's a dream realized in terms of um, I've been dedicated to squash since I was since I was a little boy. And with this squash facility, it's a dream come true. Whereas, well, let me talk about the investment a bit first. It's a court, it's a court company called ASB. And if you ever got a chance to look at professional squash on Facebook or online, you would see their little logo. So literally, this is the company that is creating the best squash courts in the world that has created this facility for us in Guyana. It's a prefab court and it's three courts in a row. And what's really special about it is that the two walls can come together to expand the width of the of the outer courts to create doubles courts. So in essence, it's three courts that, that converts into two doubles courts. So in essence, it's five courts yeah. for this one facility. So um, I, I was able to play on it for the first time the other day. And it's probably one of the best courts I've ever played <laughs> on in my life. Wow. And yeah, no, like, Seriously, like it, I've I played um, in North America and, and a bit all over the Caribbean, and I can't wait to, to show off this court to everybody, <laughs> which we'll have the chance to do, because with with this investment, uh, we've um, made promises to host Pan American Games, to host the Caribbean Championships, both senior and junior, in in the coming years. So everybody, everybody in the squash community is going to get a chance to experience the the the. The superiority of these courts. Yeah, hopefully I can visit Guyana soon and check out this facility because the way it's been described, I mean, I've seen a couple pictures, but I think, you know, seeing it in real will be a dream come true. So really, really looking forward to that. This leads me to my next question. How expensive is it to play the sport of squash? So in terms of for juniors, uh, I believe we've done our best to keep squash as affordable as possible. Our our mentality is to get a racket in every hand. So um, we we charge, let's say, $50 US for 10 weeks of one hour training a week. And that is like our intro course. We, we coach kids from as young as six to as old as, let's say, 18 years old. Um, so, you know, that that is literally less than $5, $5 a week which is quite affordable. Then let's say we're talking about gear. Uh, a, a basic squash racket can cost anywhere from, let's say, 40 US on the low end and 150 to 200 US on the higher end. So that with, you know, the most shoes are acceptable now. So you can get a, a kid playing squash now for about, let's say, about $15 a month. Um, that aside, the facilities themselves are expensive because we don't have the love, you know, you need a court to play squash. Yeah. It's not like it's not like football where, you know, once you have a ball and you have an open field and we could get two sticks, we can play. Um, it, it does require that heavy investment. So I would say on a micro level, we've done a good job to, to, to keep it affordable so we can keep the population of squash players high. But um, we still, you know, you, you can't help that it has to be played on a squash court. And that is where we have um, help from the governments. Um, that's where we get help from our corporate sponsors to, to bridge that gap. So all in all, um, that that has been really well. I think that's a good reason why we've been able to be successful yeah. in Guyana be because we're trying to get players from different socioeconomic backgrounds because, you know, talent don't have age, face, or background. Talent is talent. And it's our responsibility as uh, members of the Guyana Squash Association to, to harness that talent from wherever we can get it. Yeah, and as you mentioned, the government and corporate sponsors, has it been difficult getting help from both? Um, I would say um, we, we're very fortunate uh, as it relates to, to other countries. Uh, Enet has, has come on board as our corporate sponsor and they have given a huge injection of funds and attention into it. Uh, a big part that, that affects me personally is that we're able to stream every single competitive match now and uh, they even allowed us to carry our equipment to Cayman Islands out of the country to, to help stream in you know it, it has no business being in Cayman Islands but because they're supporters of squash they allowed me to carry our streaming equipment 
So not only are they um, assisting us in monetarily wise, they're assisting us in, in technological reasons. So they like they want to help us in terms of like getting the score on the screen as it happens live, um, trying to get commentary, like all these sorts of things. So, you know, I can't thank them enough. Thank you very much to Enet. Yeah, really, really good to hear. It's always good when you're getting the support for something positive. So you have a packed squash season ahead. In May, you have Pan Am Junior Championships. How are preparations coming along for that? So right now, we are in um, the beginning of the competitive season. We just had like our first couple of tournaments. We had the Bounty Handicap the other day and before that, the BCQS Masters. So coming into the next two weeks, we're going to have our Nationals. Now, um, Nationals usually happens in May, but we decided to pull it up to March because we want to get the team training earlier. Yes. Uh, so, so with that, it's, it's in essence going to be uh, early team selection. So we're looking to start training, like let's say uh, April 2nd, which is going to be the first day back to school after, um, after Easter. So, you know, we have them on like a, a five, five out of seven day training program. And that doesn't include their uh, personal training alone. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's a high commitment being a, a national squash player. But uh, I believe we make it palatable. I believe we, um, we give them the support that they need. Um, and it's really up to them and how much effort they want to put in, in terms of how successful they would like to be. And, you know, all we can try to do is look at their needs, look at how we could bridge gaps in terms of uh, edu uh, you know, ability, time on courts, fitness. You know, we, ha we have a lot of help in that regard. Right. And the competitions are very close because in... So you have that in May, then in June, there's the Junior Caribbean Champs, CASA. Mm -hmm. You have that to look forward to. Then in July, leading into August, there's the Pan American Masters, then the Pan American Senior Champs. So a lot yes. of work to get done? Um, a lot of work to get done. So what, so what we really try to do is select the team early so that you know, everybody knows what their commitments are. So we can get them doing that high intensity training. Um, a big part of it is keeping them on court, keeping them training, and then, Lord, Lord, like the biggest, the biggest challenge with with squash in the Caribbean is probably airfares. You know, it, it's probably more expensive than even you know training costs and equipment costs. It's, it's pretty much just flying them all over the place. So one one thing that we try to do is just keep them as busy as possible locally. So. In that essence, they are they are getting as much exposure as they can, going from tournament to tournament to tournament. And um, the only way they're gonna get through this is if they're fit. You know, like uh, fit bodies are the ones that could could last through such a heavy competitive season. And this is how come we're ramping up earlier now, so that once we get into that heavy international competitive season, we're at the best, we're at the top of our game. Yeah, and top of your game because you have something big to look forward to. Squash is one of the five new sports added to the 2028 Olympic Games. As a squash player yourself, how elated are you at this news? Well, um, our, our president, David France, says it best in terms of the persons that we're looking to go to are probably like the, like the kids of today. So in that essence, we, we as, we as uh, stewards of squash in Ghana, um, need to come good on that promise that is given to us from the international olympic community and send a competitive team to the first time squashes in the olympics this has been a dream of the international squash fraternity even before i probably even picked up a racket we got really close in 2012 and 2016 uh, and in 2020 and it kind of broke our hearts like i don't think i was too scared to dream that we would gotten back in but when we heard that we we're going to be in la in 2028 it was international elation. So <laughs> in that sense, you know, right now, I think we're at like, you know, the, the high of getting in. Yes. And then it's going to dawn on us very soon. Like, oh my God, we're in the Olympics and we need to train for this thing. Yeah. And and we, we need to, you know, we need to get to that level where, you know, possibly even, you know, trying to, to, to get an Olympic medal. It seems, it seems like a dream right now, but... This was a dream before even getting into the Olympics, so it's it's not it's not beyond us. Maybe that 10, 20 years down the line, but we got to come good on us getting into the Olympics and show them that this is a sport that deserves more spotlight. It deserves being in the Olympics, and I think not only Guyana will rally to this call of duty. I think squash squash associations all around the world are trying to vie for this for yeah. this tournament. 
there's so much to be happy about, so much to look forward to. And, you know, I can't wait as well for that Olympics because there's so much minor sports being added. And I think it's a good move in the right direction. So for my viewers who are now jumping on board and, you know, just getting accustomed to squash in Guyana, they know the top players. I mean, everybody knows Nicolette Fernandes. But can you just give us the names of a couple of players to watch this season and maybe tell us why? So um, let's go into the women first, along with Nicolette Fernandes. Here is uh, Ashley Khalil. She won her first Caribbean title in Jamaica in 2022. Um, Mary Fernandes, she's playing on the Latin American uh, professional circuit. Uh, so she's putting, in, she's putting in her hours as well. We also have like, a lot of depth in our team. Um, like We have like Ashley Degrud Khalil. We have the Wiltshire sisters, Larissa and Akila. We have Kirsten Gomes, who's who's a junior, who's now going to come into the seniors, and we're going to see if she can um, hold um, hold the caliber of women that came before. Um, on the men's side, we have Alex Arjun, who um, who's now consistently coming to top four, and I, and he's always you know vying for for glory in, individually. Even though we have like a, a team mindset, uh, I'm sure that like you said, it's a gap in our you know in our trophy rack getting a, a male Caribbean champion. And I believe persons like Alex can do it. I think Jason Ray, Khalil can do it. Um, yeah. we're, seeing, we're seeing Sam Ince, who's grandson of Coach Carl Ince and Daniel Ince, who, uh, who've been training hard in England right now. They've, they've joined the English League and they're, they're back in Guyana right now to play in our nationals. So, you know, it's a, it's a lot to look forward to. And then plus we have um, the junior champions of yesterday are coming into seniors now. Like we have Nicholas Verwey, who's a Caribbean champion, coming into seniors. We have Michael Afonso, who's um, who's a junior champion, who's going to be coming into seniors. So you know, firstly they're going to try to make the team, but um, that's that's hard in itself, much less coming to compete um, yeah. with with men. Right. And as we get ready to wrap this aspect of the interview. Any advice for those tuned in to, in case you missed it and would like to play squash professionally? Um, if you want to play squash professionally, it's extremely uh, demanding physically. It, it's, it's beyond just being a good athlete. You have to be extremely dedicated towards fitness because um, I believe it was in 2020 or 2019 where it was voted um, one of the healthiest sports in the world. And, and that doesn't come easy. You, you have to... You have to dedicate your life to this sport. Um, but in terms of becoming a professional player, the first thing to do is to, to become a player. And I think uh, I think the squash is one of those games which is extremely fun to try out. It's um, Even though there's a high skill cap, um, it's one of those sports where you can hit the ball as hard as you want, which has like a, which has like a, like a dopamine effect in terms of uh, de-stressing you. But mm -hmm. the, the jump from, from recreational to professional is huge. It's enormous. Not even like on, on a skill level alone, on a fitness level, it's extremely demanding, and that's how come. Um, that's how come you see that persons have to be extremely dedicated to 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 achieve so much in squash. It's it's not for the faint of heart at all. So it's now time for the most exciting part of today's interview. It's rapid fire time. So I'll ask a question, and you have to say the first word or phrase that comes to mind. We have to be quick. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, what word comes to mind when you hear squash? Fitness. Best part about playing squash? Um, best part about playing squash? I would say drive. <laughs> Most <laughs> challenging aspect of playing squash? Fitness again. Ooh, Sorry. we get two of the same answers so far. Favorite <laughs> squash player? Ali Farag. Your favorite shot? Um, straight drop. <laughs> Which player do you wish you got the opportunity to play against? Um, you can maybe say Ali Frag again, but um, <laughs> I would probably say like Nicole David. Okay, a hidden talent that you have? Um, ability to relate to people. Okay, any other sports you're good at other than squash? Uh, I'm pretty good long distance runner. Well, used to be. <laughs> oh, when when did you stop? Um, it's not something that is done um, 
uh, over here so much, but in terms of when I was at my fittest level as a squash player, yeah. I was I was doing pretty good miles. Oh, good, good stuff. Well, before you go, let's head across now to social media to see what's been happening. So we have this one from Guyanese Girls Rock. The Guyana Girls, okay, we're going back to the Sports Max one. So 19-year-old Jamaican squash player gets his coaching badges in Guyana. Uh, do you remember so, this in 2018? Right, so I referred to this before where uh, we had persons from the Caribbean community coming down. So that's Nicolette Fernandes in the pink there. And yeah. to her right is Taj Lumley. He's, he's from Jamaica. And they came down to do... Um, to do a, a squash coaching course. Yes. So I believe that was doing their level one and level two. Yeah. So it's really important. Yeah, that was in 2018. Let's take another reaction, a social media reaction. So we have this one from the Guyanese Girls Rock. The Guyana Girls Junior Squash Team are 11 time championship winners. They rock. Can you remember this one? So yeah, so this is <laughs> one year prior um, to, to the 12 year streak. So this is, you know, this is in the, the golden years, a, a junior squash in Guyana. Yeah. Um, and the, the leader of the team there is Akila Wiltshire. She's on our senior team now. She also won an all Jamaica championship when she lived over there uh, during UE. She's back home now. Okay, wow, you know your stuff. We have one more. Mm -hmm. Let's take this last one. So this is from Newsroom Guyana, popular media house in Guyana. Nicholas Berwe and Kristen Gomez secured Ghana's fourth gold medal at the ongoing Caribbean Area Squash Association. That's the CASA Junior Championship in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And this was just last year. So this is uh, this is in St. Vincent. Um, they had just introduced doubles to, to on the junior circuit. So this is like the first mixed doubles title that anybody's going to have. So... Kirsten and Nick are going to go down in history. Yeah. So congratulations to them. <laughs> well, DJ, it really has been a pleasure chatting with you on In Case You Missed It. I want to thank you for all your time and I'm wishing you all the best for this squash season. Mariah, thank you so much <laughs> for having us. Thank you so much for putting a sport like squash uh, in the spotlight. It's really important. It can't be um, understated enough. Thank you so much for um, Sportsman Zone for having me and other squash heads on. So. All the best and thanks so much again. Not a problem. Well, folks, that's it from us for today. Be sure to like, share and comment and let me know what you enjoyed about today's interview. Goodbye for now.